The idea of sacrificing your best and most magical piece on the chest position to get a big advantage across the game or get an instant knockout blow that can lead to a checkmate is a great idea that you should be willing to risk. Why? Because if you knew the ways of sacrificing and if you knew the ways of how to move your uh, pieces wisely, then it would benefit you very greatly. And if you don't, you're in luck because in this video, I'm going to be going over three sacrificing positions. Um, two were made by very famous grandmasters like Ed Lasker and Tall. And I will also be uh, showing you how to move your pieces wisely and how to remove maneuver and get that uh, queen back. And by that, I mean like how to get that amount uh, of uh, pieces back to make that risk uh, beneficial. But anyways, let's head on into the video. In this position, we have Albero with the white pieces and Tall with the black pieces. Um, this was, I think, the year 1961. And who better not to start with than the King of Sacrifices himself, Mr. Michael Tall. Sorry if I butchered that name, but for now, I'm going to be calling him Tall because his name is really, really hard for, to pronounce and I don't have that great... Uh, pronunciation uh, but uh, yeah he, he even has a quote about sacrificing I think it goes um, there are two types of sacrifices uh, correct ones and mine which is just a little comedic uh, quote to throw out there but anyways let's head on into the game okay so Alberto uh, sorry Albero not Alberto Albero uh, uh, starts with knight to g5 getting ready to put his bishop on d5 and getting ready to put his knight on f7 and essentially um, if he was to go to h8 then he would put his knight and it would uh, lead to a bad uh, position for black. In this position, any normal human being would respond with h6 attacking a knight, even I would. But I am not reviewing a game of a normal human being. I am reviewing a game of a sacrificing genius uh, slash crazy person. Tall sacrifices and takes the bishop on e3. And you might be saying, this is not a queen sacrifice, this is a rook sacrifice. But hang on there, I am getting to the queen sacrifice. Okay. Alberto plays d5, checking the king. And now, uh, Tall plays h8. And now Alberto goes in with knight to h7. And again, any normal player, I know I would, uh, would go to g8, and it's a fine move. It, it's not a bad. It's not a. It's not the great move. Um, but again, as I've stated again, Michael or Stahl is 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 not a is not a is not a normal person. He's a crazy person. He takes the queen. He takes the knight with the queen, and has essentially um, in his position. Uh, if if you are not to know. Uh, who was playing, uh, I would pretty much think it's a 200 rated game and uh, you have the right to do so because he has just sacrificed a queen and took a bishop with a rook when it is protected. It just it, just, it doesn't add up. Um, but obviously every game master has its reasons and uh, I should not argue with it because obviously they're crazy. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, Tall uh, owns up to his uh, sacrifice and starts gaining an advantage. Um, starting with rook to d3, attacking the queen, and Albero responds with queen to e2. And now Tal takes the pawn on d4 and attacks the king. Al Albero goes up to g2, and, and now the knight goes on e5. And you can already kind of see, all of these pieces are really, really coordinated, and they're all active, and they're all on the king's tail. While the position the position of uh, white it's not really as great as black, uh, while he only has one active piece and the rest of his pieces are either in the starting position or kind of stuck and not attacking anything, and which is obviously a great uh, position for black even though they are down by quite a few points. But anyways. Um, to, uh, Albero, sorry, it's Albero's turn. Albero responds with wanting a trade of rooks, and nothing's wrong with this move. Um, it would be pretty good to take that trade, but then again, we are playing with Tall. Tall is not 
a good player he is an excellent player and now uh, the excellent player responds with e3 attacking the queen again the queen goes back to f1 and now tall plays an amazing move bishop to e4 which doesn't seem amazing right now but it's actually very effective the king goes to h3 and now from this move uh, uh brook to f3 albero resigns why you may ask uh because in this position he is that he's attacking both the bishop and the queen and uh obviously you don't want the queen to get taken you would rather the bishop to get taken than the queen so you have to move the queen you move the queen to e2 and uh tall wouldn't actually take uh the bishop in this position as it's actually a lot better uh to check um uh on uh, f3 i mean sorry uh, ch to check on f5 on the king and now the king has to go back and uh it would look something like this obviously you have to take with the queen because then he would just get a free queen uh the bishop takes the queen king takes and now we take the bishop and it's, it's kind of funny um how he resigned um on this move because he's not down by a lot of points he has a rook and tall has a bishop and a knight just more pawns and it still doesn't seem as a problem. I just wouldn't resign this position as there is still a chance. Um, but yeah, I, I guess Albero didn't want any more of his craziness. If I was playing tall, I, I would probably resign in the first five moves. Obviously, anyone would. He's just too much. Um, especially if... Wait, let's just go back. If I was ever to see my opponent um, uh, take the bishop instead of pushing his pawn, I would resign right there because I would probably have no idea what he's planning. And I'd just be scared for my life. But anyways, let's head on into the next one. Okay. So this this game is uh, played uh, by Ed Lasker. And I think the other person's name is Thomas, George Thomas, somewhere around those lines. I'm not too sure. Uh, but they're both grand ma They're both actually international masters, not grand masters at the time. Uh, but yeah, this is still the 1900s around there. And we are starting from the beginning because this is actually a pretty short game. And some people may actually know this game because it's a very famous game. And it gets very uh, a, lot, a lot of people triggered uh, by the end of it. And I'll explain to you why later. But anyways, Ed Lasker plays, uh, starts with d4. And Thomas uh, responds with e6. And now f3, uh, f5, and now a knight to c3. This is just a normal setup. And now knight to uh, f6, uh, bishop to g5, and now with bishop to e7. Again, it's all normal. It's all just normal opening. This is uh, the start of the queen's pawn opening, Horwitz defense. Um, bishop takes, and then bishop takes bishop. You push the pawn, pawn takes, and now pawn, i uh, sorry, pawn's being taken by the knight. And let's just skip over some moves. You know, this is nothing played. And now, the special move by Ed Lasker has been played, which is h5. h5, sorry. And um, I'm just going to take a moment uh, for you guys. I'll just play that move. Um, uh, but I'll let you guys figure this one out. Because um, there's a very uh, interesting move. And I'll just let, let you... You can pause the video, as always. Um, but I'll just give you some time to figure this move out. Okay. If you did figure this move out, then congratulations. Um, if you didn't, then it's okay. We're all learners here. Um, when I first look at when I first looked at this position, it took me a time, some time to um, guess what uh, Ed Lasker did. Uh, but Ed Lasker takes I'm mean, sorry um, takes the pawn with the queen, which does seem weird. But this topic is about queen sacrifices with um, international masters and grand masters, which um, weird should not be uh, associated with them. Um, crazy should be associated with them, and um, more than just weird. Um, it, they're just there's too much. So anything uh, you'd expect is not going to be played by them. Anything you'd unexpect is going to be played by them. But anyways, the queen takes the pawn, king takes queen, and now the knight takes the bishop. And obviously the queen cannot take the knight because it is a discovered check. Um, uh, king goes to h6, and now knight goes to g4 and with this move um some of you might uh, already know this position um it's a very famous position i'll, I'll go on it again 
Okay, and now Dino's position. Okay, now he goes here and check, and then here, and then here. That's checkmate. Um, this was an actual game by International Masters, and yes, uh, I'm not lying, this is all uh, fact checked. This um, has been played before. An international uh, master did get uh, another international master's king to the other side of the board in just 18 moves. Um, that's how crazy Atlaska is. Um, but yes, it's a very famous game. Um, I remember, I, I think I studied this about a year ago, um, and it was a, it's a pretty nice game. Um, but I did mention uh, a lot of people got angry at this game because in this position, uh, when he reached this position, uh, Thomas actually resigned. And if he was to keep going, it would have been a pretty uh, a good checkmate. Um, I'm not talking about going to D2. I'm talking about castling and checkmating, which is silly, I know, but it's just a very cool checkmate. Imagine having to castle and then checkmating your opponent or having to on passant and checkmate your opponent. It would be, it would be very nice. Um, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, I think they were talking about it, and I think Ed Lasker um, was to rather go to D2 uh, rather than uh, uh, Castle, which just triggered a lot of people for some reason. But yeah, that's a little backstory on behind it. But this just this just shows um, sacrifices can lead very far, and you need to think ahead. You need to have a bright mind when you're uh, going to these sacrifices, and you need to be ready. Why? Because sacrifices are a big risk, um, which could equal high reward, but it can also lead to a very big loss. And you just really need to look at these sacrifices, evaluate them, uh, go over it if you have time. If you don't, then uh, I'd rather you just play normal move. Um, but yeah, this was Ed Lasker uh, versus Thomas, both IMs. And now let's hot, hop in into the next one. Okay, and most people... Uh, probably know what this is. This is not an actual game. This is in between two people, but I just want to show you um, If we were to go back this uh, was played on 13 moves uh, Was probably a lot more because I did start from like the middle game So it's probably around like 30 maybe 20 or 30 maybe 35 moves uh, this was played in with 18 moves and This is gonna be played in with Queen sacrifice um, of about four to five moves and this shows it doesn't matter how much or where you are in the game you can sacrifice any time you can sacrifice in the middle game and game opening some some openings actually require you to uh, sacrifice your queen um, I'd rather you not play them though because uh, they can be easily countered and it's a big risk but anyways uh, it just shows that um, no matter what time it is uh, of the position of the game um, if you have that opportunity to take that risk and if you knew how to risk and play your moves wisely then you should absolutely take them and, and now in this position this is just a it's just a review um, but this does include a queen sacrifice probably one of the most famous queen sacrifices is um, it's called a smother mate and that now in this position um, you were to play g8 uh, queen to g8 and obviously the king cannot take because it is being protected by the bishop so the rook has to take and that is the start of the queen sacrifice and now it leads up to the smothered mate you can also uh, do this with other pieces but it's mostly mainly done with queen sacrifices and it just shows that no matter um, no matter how small the sacrifice is, even if you're sacrificing um, the the queen for a, uh, a bishop or a pawn or maybe nothing, uh, if you want him to just get into that position where he can put that striking blow or have that long-term advantage, then you should absolutely go for them. And um, yeah, that those have been my uh, three uh, sacrificing overviews. Two of them were games. Um, this one was played with Albero versus Michael Tal. Sorry if I butchered that pronouncing. Um, and this was played by Thomas and um, Ed Lasker, a very famous guy. If you um, want to get into more of that sacrificing lead and study it more, then I'd um, advise you to look at more uh, tall games and also look at more Ed Lasker games because they're very good um, uh, chess players that uh, have uh, lots of sacrifices um, in their repertoire of games. There's also Vasily Ivanchuk, 
um, he also has a lot of um, sacrificings um, in his games. But um, yeah, that has been the video. I always appreciate constructive criticism, and I appreciate a like if you liked the video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.